What is up you guys, Andre here back with another video. And as you can tell, it is something a little different today, or should I say it's the same place, but different background, different set, because Jessica and I are now married, as you can tell by the ring on my finger, and we'll be spending a lot more time. And it's been now 10 days since we got married, and it's exciting, um, I love it. Um, if you guys want to check out our wedding ceremony, it's going to be in this channel. If you want to see our reception, that's going to be in the other channel where Jessica and I are, are also going to start something new. We're thinking of starting a podcast where we work on our relationship. We touch on very serious topics and such. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you guys check out the other channel and make sure you guys subscribe and turn on the notification bell. But for this one, that's not what we're doing in this channel. We are going to talk about, of course, finances, reacting to different people, different channels and such. So for today's video, we are going to watch a video called 100 People Reveal How Much Money They Have Saved, Keep It 100, Cut. So I've never seen a video from Cut before and this is going to be the first one. I think it's going to be a great episode. They're going to have 100 people. They're going to ask how much money they've saved. So without further ado, let's start this video after you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, of course. And now we can start the video. Oh, see, <laughs> you in my business, don't do that. So that is actually one of the weirdest things, not weird, but um, totally normalized now is that you don't reveal your own net worth, your saving, how much you make, um, especially at work. And I think this is somewhat personal. I don't like revealing how much money I've saved up also. Um, it's good to put a number when it comes to goals. For example, Jessica and I are working on our um, emergency fund and we are thinking of a six month emergency fund, which is equivalent to about $18,000. So that's okay, but I don't, I'm not really confident when people ask me, hey, how much is in your um, emergency savings? And I wouldn't say, oh, it's $18,000. Usually I would avoid that and say, oh, it's about six months worth of emergency fund. So um, if they ask me this, I, I guess I would have to tell them, but it would be really awkward for me. <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. Oh God. I'm not sure I'm confident about saying that one. My mom always told me you don't know how much money you have and don't put your purse on the floor. Do you not feel comfortable saying like around how much you have saved? Not really. I'm gonna keep it to myself. Wow. Some stuff just needs to be private. How much money do you have saved up? Uh, do I, do I have to answer? I've been broke as hell before, but now I'm making six figures. How much money you got? Um, I, I got money. What you got? I got money. It's okay talking about money, right? Definitely. Let's f it out. How much money do you have in saving? 500. Oh. I wasn't expecting there to be a curse word in there, so we're going to bleep that out. Um, but it's funny that everyone has the exact same reaction. They laugh because the question was so unexpected. And it's okay to talk about money, but sometimes asking about your savings is a little bit too personal because I guess if you compare to the next person, there's going to be someone who's going to have a lot more money than you do, or you try to avoid other people judging you, saying that, oh, you have all this money. Or the opposite, it's like, hey, look how little money you have. So I completely understand. I wonder if there's someone here who's going to say how much money they have. 1,000. 200,000. 30,000. 28,000. 16. 16. 15. 12. 11. 11,000. 10. 10. 10. Maybe have almost 10K. 9,000 dollars. 8,000 dollars. Thanks, unemployment. How much do you have in savings? Six grand. Six. 6,000 dollars saved up. 5,000. 5,000. How much money do you have in savings? Two grand. 2,000. Are you feeling pretty good about that? Feeling great about that. Trying to buy a house. I love her um, confidence in there, $2,000. And again, I guess there's really nothing to be ashamed about. You know, everyone is in a different place when it comes to how much money they make, how much is in their savings, and they have other life um, happenings that are going on. Of course, it's going to be, I feel like I'm going to be a bit more judgy when they say, oh, I have little savings. And that's because they try to live a luxurious life and just keep spending their money. I'd rather have someone say that, hey, I have $2,000 in my savings and it's because 
I'm paying for different kinds of things, um, something that makes sense. Um, so for her, she's saying that she has $2,000 and she's trying to save up for a house, but there's a lot more to the story than just, hey, I have this much saving. It's really, where does your money go? A couple thousand, 1,800, a thousand, not a lot. <laughs> 800 in my savings. How much money do you have in your savings account? Um, <gasps> um <laughs> I don't check the bank account because I don't need that negative energy. That's actually the wrong mindset to have. You should always check your bank and you how much money you have. It's not because of that negative energy. It's for you to reinforce saying that, hey, I need to build up my emergency fund. Hey, I need to save up for this. Hey. I need to save up for that. It's a form of motivation, if you may, so you can build up your net worth. Because if you stop looking at it and then you overspend, then you're at a negative balance and that shouldn't happen ever. How much money do you have in savings? Not as much as I'd like. Do you make money? I do make money. How much do you got? Not that much. Well, I don't have a whole lot saved. I feel like those are the smart answers. Like, um, yeah, I don't have much, so don't ask me. So I wonder what they do also and how much money they make, so I think that's a good data to know. How much right now do you have in savings? $500. $200. 135 $120, just wait until payday, man. That's cutting it close, right? Oh, it's cutting it close for sure. A solid $100, and I feel very good about that. That's gonna be good, good, good eating for the next week. Um, so I love this person's confidence, but like I keep saying, um, if you have $100 in your savings, unless if a lot of it is in your investment and assets, then that's okay. You shouldn't save a lot of money. But this is really dangerous. You should build up your emergency fund first, at least $1,000, and then maybe build it up to six months because something can just happen like a pandemic hits again. And there's just so many, so many random things that, that can just happen. And you need to be, you need to be ready for that. Like $60, $10, almost none. No money is none. I ain't got jack savings. Why not? I'd rather stay home and smoke a little. Uh, I gotta say that my Robinhood account is kind of... I had so, many, so much savings a few months ago. I'm very bad at stocks, so... <laughs> See, I wouldn't consider that a savings. Your investments is something, your savings is another thing. Your investments is not savings because that is an investment for you and your future. And... You don't touch that for a very long time. So you're hoping that your investment is going to make you money in the future so you don't have to work and you don't have to make more money. So that's completely different from your savings, by the way. Just let's make that clear. Um, I have little savings. I have savings just enough, but I have bigger investments because I worry about my future a lot more and I want to um, invest in a longer period of time compared to having a huge chunk in a short amount of time. Do I have money? No. <laughs> I gave all of everything to uh, my kids and my wife when I left through our divorce. I just left everything to them. How much money do you See, that's what I mean. So this guy has um, a lot of circumstances in his life. You know, it's like, hey, do you have savings? He can probably say none. I don't have any savings. But that's just like quick to judge of saying, hey, this guy doesn't have savings. This guy is you know, pretty stupid for not having any savings. But he has life circumstances. Um, he got a divorce. He gave everything to his ex-wife and to his children. Now he's probably just building everything up again from the very bottom. And hey, it looks like he's humble enough to admit that. And he might become very successful at the end and have that huge saving that he needs and maybe invest it in the future. Right now I'm a current student, so I'm broke. <laughs> How much money do you have in savings? That ain't none of your business. I don't want my mom to know that. I wonder if I should say this. Go f yourself, you know me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm usually so comfortable about talking about this. Is it hard to talk about money? Yeah, bro. It's harder to talk about money to people that have more money or that are more stable than you. Money is something that I was always taught not to talk about. Do you have any debt? Ooh. Uh. <laughs> So these are really uncomfortable questions. Um, if you ask me two years ago, I would react the exact same way because I'm not very good at my money and I'm going to always compare myself to someone who has a lot more money. And that's also because I was living my life in a way where I'm not saving 
um, or I'm not spending wisely and I'm just throwing it off rather than investing, saving, and making my money, my money's worth basically. So that is really embarrassing for me. But ever since maybe about two years ago when I started reading about Dave Ramsey's book and um, I started watching Graham Stephan's channel, then it became clear to me how important money is. And that's what I've been focused on. Well, not, I don't love money. It's a great utility when it comes to having my freedom. Um, but money is nothing to be embarrassed about. And if you're at that spot right now, then you need to change that mindset. Am I allowed to say this on camera after you need that? Oh, I have a lot of debt. Like, I got one light ticket that I just got a letter that said it went to collections. Do you have any student debt? Oh uh, yeah, I do. For college, when I try to go, they'll never give me financial aid, so I pay for school myself. How much debt do you have? Five thousand dollars. Ten thousand. Twenty. Sixty-three. A hundred thousand dollars in debt. I went to a private college, and it was a very dumb idea. Do you have any debt? Hospital debt. Yep. I uh, have a few chronic conditions, and I was uninsured. Mostly medical. All right. So, a lot of people have been cursing in this. Um, so we're gonna bleep that out. So. Uh, don't worry about it, but um, that is another thing that we talk about in this channel and there are smart debt and there are debt that is just not smart and there are debt that you just can't help. For example, um, medical things. For some reason, getting admitted to a hospital and healthcare is so expensive right now and honestly, that is the reason why I want to um, go into the medical field. I want to become a physician because, you know, there are people who just can't afford it. And there are a lot of people who deserve to be taken care of medically. And it's just something that sucks a lot. Um, so, for example, I got my graduate degree and I got debt. And I would say that is bad debt because I don't think that was worth it. If I want to become a physician and want to become a doctor, then I'm going to have a bigger debt. And I would say that would be a smart investment in the future. So, it's just really, there is good debt, there is bad debt and you should avoid bad debt and you should take on the risk for good debt. And education right now is really, in my opinion, in general, unless if you're on a very professional level, education is pretty much bad debt because we don't have a positive ROI when it comes to our education, especially on an undergraduate degree and let's say about a master's degree. So that's just me. There are a few good um, majors out there that are ROI positive and very, very handful of those majors. Do you have any debt? I just paid off my debt. Next month I'll be 100% debt free. Are you good with money? You know what? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Really good with money. Why are you good with money? My parents always encouraged me to like save. I've been trying to be cheap. Cheap to a fault, almost. Saving money was better sooner than later. Are you good with money? No. Why aren't you good with money? Because if I make it, I spend it. I love an eBay fashion find. I do um, have a little shopping dependency. How do you get by? Not so much. I'm living month to month right now. That's the part where you want. You don't want. You don't want to um, live paycheck to paycheck, month to month. You want to save little by little. And honestly, there are many ways that you can save a lot of money. Um, I, I posted a lot of videos when it comes to um, weird ways into saving money and, and such. And honestly, I believe that even at a minimum wage job, you can still save money. You just have to be smart about it and you just have to really be frugal. And you also have to find a way to cut back in a lot of ways. So I really think a lot of people, a lot of people can have that big savings. Unemployment this year has been, I'm still on it. Sometimes I like talk to men and like get their money, but I don't do that anything with them. They want me to be their sugar baby, like they want their sugar, but it's like, <laughs> I just want your money. So those are the type of people you want to avoid are people who just, your friends because they want your money. Um, just letting you know, if um, I'm hanging out with you and you're hanging out with me, um, my close friends know how frugal I am and I won't be spending nonchalantly on um, takeouts and eating out and spending $20 just for lunch or dinner. I'm a pretty frugal guy, but when it comes to Jessica, her and I um, budget and we save a certain amount and we do spend it on ourselves once in a while, but not too often. Well, that is actually a pretty good episode and I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't really enjoy the um, cursing, uh, that's just me. And 
I really liked it and that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you guys subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more videos. And also just as a reminder, make sure you guys check out my other channel because Jessica and I are going to start something new, something different and I'm really excited to share it to you guys. So make sure you guys do that. And lastly, make sure you guys get your two free stocks from Webull down in the description below. Once you sign up and deposit at least $100, you're going to get your two free stocks worth up to $1,000. $600. And that is it guys. And thank you so much and looking forward to the next one.